Mile 22 is directed by Peter Berg and stars Mark Wahlberg in their fourth collaboration together after Lone Survivor, Patriot's Day, and Deepwater Horizon. And this film tells the tale of an elite, top-secret tactical command unit that's trying to get a police officer out of the country because he has very specific information. And he's keeping this information at bay until they get him out of the country. And he's sort of using it as a way to make sure he can get safely transported to the United States of America. And in so doing, they have to go 22 miles through some very dangerous territory. I've liked pretty much all of the collaborations that Peter Berg and Mark Wahlberg have done so far, especially Lone Survivor, which I think is really good. But something about the way this film was marketed made it seem like they were trying to keep a lot from us. And that's usually a good thing, but it felt sort of like a defense. And there's definitely a lot about this film that's not in any of the trailers. For one, Mark Wahlberg's character is very obsessive. He has a rubber band that he keeps around his wrist that he pulls and he hurts himself with it to kind of keep himself in focus because pain keeps him focused. His character seems to have a heightened sense of awareness and thinking. He's very clever. He kind of reminded me of a more intense and loud version of Ben Affleck's character in The Accountant. Mile 22 struggles from trying to be a lot of different things in one movie. It's a conventional action film where a team is trying to get somebody to safety through a bunch of gunfire and fight scenes, but at the same time it's really trying to have an impactful political message that means something. And these two movies don't really mesh. At the end of the film, after like a two minute scene where a bunch of information is thrown at us, it's kind of difficult to really understand what the message behind Peter Berg's film is. Is it just an action movie with some fight scenes and explosions, or is this trying to be something more? If it's trying to be something more, which I really do think it is, it's very unclear as to what they're going for. The only thing we learn about Mark Wahlberg's character is through narration and files that are thrown our way during the opening credit sequence. If it wasn't for that opening credit sequence, we wouldn't know anything about his character. We learn everything in those two minutes, and after that, we barely figure out anything else. Also troubling is that the film doesn't seem to have a middle. It definitely has a beginning, and it definitely has an end. But somewhere partway through the movie, it feels like the first act and the third act just collided. Because there's a setup, there's an opening scene, and then we learn a little bit about what's happening, and then all of a sudden, they've got this guy, and they're transporting him. And then the movie is just a big, long action scene, and... Nothing really feels like it happens in the middle. It doesn't really feel like there's time to breathe. And, and while I usually actually really like that in a film, here I was hoping for more. I was like, what's going on in their heads? We're thrown into these action sequences so quickly with very little buildup, and so it's difficult to care about what's going on. And sometimes we are asked to give a shit, and I just didn't. But by far, and I, I've been saving this, by far... The thing about this film that bugged me the most is Peter Berg's direction of the action scenes. I'm a fan of Peter Berg. I like his films. Quite a bit of them, actually. Here, he, he seems to have gone back to the mid to late 2000s and has embraced the shaky, hyperactively edited films of that time period once again with action scenes that would be beautiful if he just put them in a wide or, or allowed us to soak in some moments. We have someone as talented as Aikau Uwais, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, but he was the lead from the Raid films, and here he is, and he's also listed as a fight choreographer in the credits, and I can tell that he's doing amazing things. There's no need for shaky cam and quick cut editing to mask poor stunt work. They don't show you anything he's doing because everything is so in your face. And, 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 and I thought we were past this, to be honest. I thought that the people had made a stand and Hollywood had listened and then we got films like John Wick, you know, that understood this. Or even, despite its faults, Atomic Blonde had amazing action sequences. I thought we had progressed past this. But this film, once again, reaches back into the mid-2000s and says, hey, remember when you couldn't tell what the fuck was going on? Yeah, we, we like that, right? Oh, you don't? Well, it doesn't matter. We're going to put it in this movie. I'm a fan of Paul Greengrass and the way he cuts together quick cut editing and shaky cam. I think he does it with considerable style, and he doesn't use it in a way to, to, to like, shadow poor stunt work. The action sequences in this film took all the wrong lessons from Paul Greengrass's films, like the Bourne films, and uses them in, in the way that, say, like, the, the last few Taken movies did, Olivier Megaton's films, 
Colombiana and, and that type of action, the way it was cut together. And I was sitting in the theater blown away that we got another big budget film like this with the considerable talent on the screen doing the fight scenes and it's helmed that way. Strangely, the film also seems rather oblivious to Mark Wahlberg's celebrity status because a character in the film at a very integral moment actually looks at him and says, say hi to your mother for me. And he's like, what did you just say? What did you just say to me? I was sitting in the theater thinking, are they even aware of the famous Andy Sandberg Saturday Night Live skit? Hey dog, how's it going? I like your fur, that looks really great. So you're a dog, right? What's that all about? Okay, well it was great to meet you. Say hi to your mother for me, okay? I have a question for you. Did you see the SNL Andy Samberg I was sketch? just gonna say, I am Max Payne. Say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> it completely took me out of the movie, and there's so many moments like that where Wahlberg is given these monologues or, or characters say things that are supposed to be really important, and it just comes off kind of cheesy. John Malkovich is in the film wearing a, a very obvious toupee, and he's basically like the guy behind the computer screens who barks orders at them causing the edit to constantly cut to drone shots or, or cameras that are on top of cars. It's so hyperactive that it feels like they thought everything would be a lot smarter and sound considerably more highbrow if it's just cut together really fast. But it doesn't. It's just a barrage of nonsense. Mile 22 could have been a really fun action film, but it tries to be so much more. Its message is unclear. The action scenes are directed very poorly, and again, I must say, I am a fan of Peter Berg, and I'm saying this out of love for his other films. This could have been so much better, and it was very disappointing. I'm gonna give Mile 22 a D plus. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon coming to you this weekend. As always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.